Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is going to be the next edition of the Grittiest Take, a preview to Game 2 of the Flyers and Pittsburgh Penguins series. The Flyers, of course, did not look good in Game 1. They fell flat and lost 5-2 to two and allowed the likes of Michael Matheson and Cody Ceci to score against them, which are definitely not the puck uh, putter in the net guys and guys you want to allow to get goals against you. Joel Farabee has continued to step up and show up and show out as he was able to get the one goal for the Flyers. Sammy Kappen and son Kasperi destroyed them as well. Or, excuse me, Fairby was able to get both goals for the Flyers, I should say. So he really showed up and showed out. And um, you're going to need to see that again from him, but I think you will. He just seems like he's developing into a budding star now. And he's going to be a great two-way player for years to come. Uh, Kappen is obviously a good little cat, a good little player um, when he's right and with the right guys on his line. It's just... My whole thing with that game, since I wasn't able to do a reaction video to it, um, was you shouldn't be able to lose, especially when you got to shoot them 42-27. to 27. You already did play uh, one of his best games of the season, uh, bar none. But uh, you shouldn't be able to lose to Pittsburgh without Crosby. Just like a week or some change ago, the Sixers lost to the, the Cavs. Even though they didn't have Tobias Harris, you still shouldn't let the Cavs guards just torch you as such where you shouldn't let other guys on Pittsburgh, especially the CCs of the world and the Mathesons, really be the guys that step up and become big deciding factors in the game. Kapanen's one thing. He's a very solid developing budding player himself. He's not going to be a star, but he should be a pretty good NHL player. So that's one thing. But allowing guys like CC and Matheson to be big deciding factors, Rust is another thing as well. He's become a Flyers killer, and it's just been very good, unfortunately, for us Flyers fans since going over to Pittsburgh. So those two, that's one thing. You just need to let the meat and potato guys of Pittsburgh be just that. You can't let them be the deciding factors of the game. CC and Matheson are just the meat and potato, or the really the extra sauce guys of the team, not even the meat and potato. Meat and potato guys are actually the Crosbys and Malkins. They're like the sauce you put on the meat and potatoes, just the extra players on the team, and you let them be the biggest contributing factor. I see the 11-5-3 and and Flyers against the 12-8-1 Penguins today coming in really pissed off and stepping up today. Um, I think this team's going to have a pretty good game, uh, whether we do end up going with uh, Moose or... Um, Elliot, or excuse me, Moose or Hart. It looks like Elliot's projected in the projected lineup. I think that would be a good idea, give him the second game after we didn't have the best performance in front of Carter, and then that weird goal when he was going to leave the net, and then they were able to shoot it on Math with Matheson back down for the goal. That was very unfortunate and annoying, but that's just the way it is. Either way, though, just like I am with the fan of them, confident in both of our net minders, and I think both of them are going to be able to step up. It seems... Um, like, I hope Knack gets put back in the lineup because I think you need the tenacity and the forechecking ability of a Kubel. Bunny's been playing well, so if you don't want to bring him out, I mean, there's other guys that haven't been as consistent. You bench TK to try to get him going. Um, he's preached patience with it, but I wouldn't be surprised if Patrick does sit just to rest his head one of these days. You could put Knack back in for him. You obviously could put him in for Raffle. And then the biggest uh, guy that would probably come out and put Knack in is Bunham in. But I think uh, we'll put up a good lineup today. It wasn't really the lineup last time. It was the defense. All of a sudden, Ghost had a game. He struggled again when he's looked very good since. And everybody chill out that I saw on Twitter that are kind of coming at Ghost a little bit just after one game. He's been very solid this year. He's only had about three games where he's made those big mistakes like he did last game. He's been playing well. He's going to continue to play well. He's continuing to get his legs back under him. And he's looked really solid, Provy. That's actually one of our decent graded defense line where our bottom pair has always been our Achilles here whether it's Hag or Braun, Gus or Hag, Gus or Braun. Those have usually been graded in the bottom 15 to bottom 10 tier of the league where Provy and Ghost have usually been graded pretty well and fairly well actually so they definitely, Provy's never a problem and Ghost definitely has not really been a problem whatsoever this year and then Myers and Sanheim are a good graded pair as well as both just continue to progress. They also bench Myers to obviously kind of get him going more the other day as well. So it'll be interesting to see if they put Knack in and end up letting someone rest tonight or if they still keep him out of the lineup. I think it would be good to put him back in because of his forechecking ability and tenacity he brings to the game against a Pittsburgh-like team. But we'll see what they're able to do. Um, I think tonight the biggest keys are going to be you can't make those turnovers. Pittsburgh without Crosby is not the same team as they used to be without Crosby. They don't have as much depth. 
But if you give guys like Kapanen with their speed turnovers, they're going to capitalize. Same with Brian Russ of the world. All those guys are going to capitalize. You turn over the neutral zone as a goaltender was leaving. Matheson capitalized. You have to limit the turnovers. No matter who you're playing, they're going to most likely be able to capitalize on turnovers, especially when they still have the skill of Pittsburgh, just not the depth throughout the full four lines. They really only have a top two now in Pittsburgh if you do turn it over, other than Bluger, who's pretty solid in their bottom six. So I think the key is going to be limit the turnovers, even though their power plays rock, ranked bottom tier, excuse me, do not put them on the power play because you still got the rest of the world. You got the Kapanins, you got the Latang, you got the Malkins. So you don't want to be able to give them better chances. So you still don't want to put them on the power play. That's for certain for me at least. Uh, so those are the two biggest keys in my opinion. It's going to be limiting the turnovers from the defensive end, obviously not putting Pittsburgh on the power play. And then the third and final one is going to be the goaltending and how much we actually protect the goaltender. The Flyers obviously did not do the best job of limiting high chances, where Pittsburgh, yes, they only had 27 shots on goal, but in terms of scoring chances, they had a pretty damn good amount of good scoring chances in those 27 shots amidst the net on a few as well um, in Tuesday's game. So you're going to have to also limit that. You can't have turnovers lead to A-plus scoring chances for the other team. So we're going to need the goaltending to step up as it has this year in the past. And we're going to need to limit the turnovers and have the defense also just play a more defensively sound game in general. And that game, it seemed like everybody was kind of like we were early in the season or playing against Boston where everyone kind of looks a little lost and doesn't know all the spots to go to and everything. That was definitely not one of our better performances, probably one of our worst, not counting the Boston game uh, this season. Uh, when it came to performing in that game and not being able to find ways to score. Now, I will hand it to Yari. He did look the best he has all season probably in that game. But you still got to be able to find ways to get it in when you got 42 shots. You can't just have two goals by your guy that's really been one of the carrying weights of the team along with JVR this year, Joel Fairby. So I think him, Fairby, JVR, and obviously the G's, and the coots of the world are going to be your big contributing factors. Your young stars and your veterans are going to be the guys that are going to be able to get you over the hump against Pittsburgh. And I already gave you my keys for the game. I hope you all enjoyed this edition of the Grittiest Take, previewing the second game of the series against the Pittsburgh Penguins. I believe our Flyers will be able to win this game. I'm going to bring it a little bit lower scoring. I don't think it'll be a seven-goal total game again. I'm going to go 4-2 to two Philadelphia Flyers, make it one less, a six-goal total. Um... And that'll be the way that they'll be able to win tonight. They'll play better defense. They'll limit the turnovers. They'll limit putting Pittsburgh on the power play and really play a better style of Flyers hockey today, in my opinion, as we saw against the Rangers and the Buffalo Sabres rather than what we saw last game against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So please like, comment, and subscribe here at Sports Fanatic News and also at Flyers Nitty Gritty. And also please check out FlyersNitty.com nittygritty.com excuse me and steelflyers.com we really appreciate all your support this has been sports fanatic news and flyers nitty gritty i'm joe borg aka pro joe this has been the grittiest take preview to game two of the philadelphia flyers and pittsburgh penguin series hope you enjoyed let me know where you think the results gonna go in the comments have a great safe and pleasant day everybody and enjoy the hockey peace out